several distinct periods of Cypriot intercommunal violence involving the two main ethnic communities, Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots, marked mid-20th century Cyprus. These included the Cyprus Emergency of 1955–59 during British rule, the post-independence Cyprus Crisis of 1963–64, and the Cyprus Crisis of 1967. Hostilities culminated in the 1974 de facto division of the island along the Green Line following the Turkish invasion of Cyprus. The region has been relatively peaceful since then, but the Cyprus dispute has continued, with various attempts to solve it diplomatically having been generally unsuccessful. <laughs> Background Turks made up a significant portion of the population of the island and had ruled the island for several hundred years prior to leasing the island to the British and the subsequent British annexing of the island in 1914. In 1914, after the Ottoman Empire joined World War I on the side of the Central Powers, the island was annexed by the United Kingdom. Soon afterward, in 1915, the UK offered the island to Greece ruled by King Constantine I of Greece on condition that Greece joins the war on the side of the British. Although the offer was supported by the liberal ex-Greek Prime Minister Eleftherios Venizelis, it was rejected by the king, and his Prime Minister Zamis, who wished to keep Greece out of the war. The wife of the king, Sophia of Prussia, was German. After the foundation of the Republic of Turkey, in 1923, the new Turkish government formally recognized Britain's sovereignty over Cyprus. Greek Cypriots believed it was their natural and historic right to unite the island with Greece Enosis, as many of the Aegean and Ionian islands had done following the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. Enosis and Taksim The repeated rejections by the British of Greek Cypriot demands for Enosis led to armed resistance organized by a group known as the National Organization of Cypriot Struggle, or EOKA. EOKA, led by the Greek Cypriot commander George Grievers, systematically targeted British colonial authorities. One of the effects of the EOKA campaign was to alter the Turkish position from demanding full reincorporation into Turkey to a demand for taxim partition. The fact that the Turks were a minority was, according to Nihat Erem, to be addressed by the transfer of thousands of Turks from mainland Turkey so that the Greek Cypriots would cease to be the majority. When Erem visited Cyprus as the Turkish representative, he was advised by the then British governor John Harding that Turkey should send educated Turks to settle in Cyprus. Turkey actively promoted the idea that on the island of Cyprus two distinctive communities existed, and sidestepped its former claim that the people of Cyprus were all Turkish subjects. In doing so, Turkey's aim to have self-determination of two to be equal communities in effect led to de jure partition of the island. This could be justified to the international community against the will of the majority Greek population of the island. Dr. Fazal Kukuk in 1954 had already proposed Cyprus be divided in two at the 35 degrees parallel. Crisis of 1955–1959 The British started recruiting Turkish Cypriots into the police force that patrolled Cyprus to fight the EOKA. EOKA targeted colonial authorities, including police, but Georgios Grievers, the leader of EOKA, did not initially wish to open up a new front by fighting Turkish Cypriots and reassured them that EOKA would not harm their people. In 1956, some Turkish Cypriot policemen were killed by EOKA members and this provoked some intercommunal violence in the spring and summer, but these attacks on policemen were not motivated by the fact that they were Turkish Cypriots. However, in January 1957, Grievers changed his policy as his forces in the mountains became increasingly pressured by the British forces. In order to divert the attention of the British forces, EOKA members started to target Turkish Cypriot policemen intentionally in the towns, so that Turkish Cypriots would riot against the Greek Cypriots and the security forces would have to be diverted to the towns to restore order. The killing of a Turkish Cypriot policeman on 19 January, when a power station was bombed, and the injury of three others, provoked three days of intercommunal violence in Nicosia. The two communities targeted each other in reprisals, at least one Greek Cypriot was killed and the army was deployed in the streets. Greek Cypriot stores were burned and their neighborhoods attacked. 
Following the events, the Greek Cypriot leadership spread the propaganda that the riots had merely been an act of Turkish Cypriot aggression. Such events created chaos and drove the communities apart both in Cyprus and in Turkey. On the 22nd of October 1957, Sir Hugh McIntosh Foote replaced Sir John Harding as the British governor of Cyprus. Foote suggested five to seven years of self government before any final decision. His plan rejected both Enosis and Taksim. The Turkish Cypriot response to this plan was a series of anti British demonstrations in Nicosia on 27 and 28 January 1958, rejecting the proposed plan because the plan did not include partition. The British then withdrew the plan. By 1958, signs of dissatisfaction with the British increased on both sides, with Turkish Cypriots now forming Vulcan, later known as the Turkish Resistance Organization Paramilitary Group, to promote partition and the annexation of Cyprus to Turkey as dictated by the Mendera Plan. On 27 January 1958, British soldiers opened fire against a crowd of Turkish Cypriot rioters. The events continued until the next day. In June 1958, the British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan was expected to propose a plan to resolve the Cyprus issue. In light of the new development, the Turks rioted in Nicosia to promote the idea that Greek and Turkish Cypriots could not live together and therefore any plan that did not include partition would not be viable. This violence was soon followed by bombing, Greek Cypriot deaths, and looting of Greek Cypriot owned stores and houses. Greek and Turkish Cypriots started to flee mixed population villages where they were a minority in search of safety. This was effectively the beginning of segregation of the two communities. On 7 June 1958 a bomb exploded at the entrance of the Turkish embassy in Cyprus. Following the bombing Turkish Cypriots looted Greek Cypriot properties. On June 26, 1984 the Turkish Cypriot leader, Rauf Denktas, admitted on British Channel ITV that the bomb was placed by the Turks themselves in order to create tension. On January 9, 1995 Rauf Denktas repeated his claim to the famous Turkish newspaper Milliyet in Turkey. The crisis reached a climax on June 12, 1958 when eight Greeks, out of an armed group of 35 arrested by soldiers of the Royal Horse Guards on suspicion of preparing an attack on the Turkish quarter of Skylora, were killed in a suspected attack by Turkish Cypriot locals, near the village of Giannelli having being ordered to walk back to their village of Kondomenos. The Republic of Cyprus Right after the EOKA campaign began the British government successfully began to turn the Cyprus issue from a British colonial problem into a Greek-Turkish issue. British diplomacy exerted backstage influence on the Adnan Mendera government, with the aim of making Turkey active in Cyprus. For the British the attempt had a two-fold objective. On one hand the EOKA campaign would be silenced as quickly as possible, on the other hand Turkish Cypriots would not side with Greek Cypriots against the British colonial claims over the island and the island would remain under the British. The Turkish Cypriot leadership at the time, visited Mendera to discuss the Cyprus issue. When asked how the Turkish Cypriots should respond to the Greek Cypriot claim of Enosis Mendera replied. You should go to the British Foreign Minister and request the status quo be prolonged, Cyprus to remain as a British colony. Later, when the Turkish Cypriots visited the British Minister of Foreign Affairs and requested that Cyprus remain a colony, the minister replied, You should not be asking for colonialism at this day and age, you should be asking for Cyprus be returned to Turkey, its former owner. As Turkish Cypriots began to look to Turkey for protection, it soon became apparent to Greek Cypriots that Enosis was extremely unlikely. Greek Cypriot leader Archbishop Makarios III now set independence for the island as his objective. Britain resolved to solve the dispute by creating an independent Cypriot state. In 1959 all involved parties signed the Zurich Agreements, Britain, Turkey, Greece, and the Greek and Turkish Cypriot leaders, Makarios and Dr. Fazal Kukuk respectively. The new constitution drew heavily on the ethnic composition of the island. The president would be a Greek Cypriot and the vice president a Turkish Cypriot with an equal veto. The contribution to the public service would be set at a ratio of 70 to 30, and the Supreme Court would consist of an equal number of judges from both communities plus an independent judge who was not Greek, Turkish or British. The Zurich Accords were supplemented by a number of treaties. 
The Treaty of Guarantee stated that secession or union with any state was forbidden, and that Greece, Turkey and Britain would be given guarantor status to intervene should this be violated. The Treaty of Alliance allowed for two small Greek and Turkish military contingents to be stationed on the island whilst the Treaty of Establishment gave Britain sovereignty over two bases in Akrotiri and Dekalia. On August 15, 1960, the Republic of Cyprus was proclaimed. The new constitution brought dissatisfaction to Greek Cypriots that felt that it was highly unjust for them, for historical, demographic and contributional reasons. While 80% of the island were Greek Cypriots and Greek Cypriots were the vast majority and indigenous people of the island for thousands of years, plus contributing to 94% of the taxes, the new constitution was giving the 17% of Turkish Cypriots, with a 6% contribution to the taxes, 30% of the government jobs and 40% of the national security jobs. Crisis of 1963–1964 Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Proposed constitutional amendments and the Akritas Plan Within three years tensions between the two communities in administrative affairs began to show. In particular disputes over separate municipalities and taxation created a deadlock in government. A constitutional court ruled in 1963 Makarios had failed to uphold Article 173 of the Constitution which called for the establishment of separate municipalities for Turkish Cypriots. Makarios subsequently declared his intention to ignore the judgment, resulting in the West German judge resigning from his position. Makarios proposed 13 amendments to the constitution, which according to the historian Keith Kyle had the effect of resolving most of the issues in the Greek Cypriot favor. Under the proposals, the president and vice president would lose their veto, the separate municipalities as sought after by the Turkish Cypriots would be abandoned, the need for separate majorities by both communities in passing legislation would be discarded and the civil service contribution would be set at actual population ratios 82 to 18 instead of the slightly higher figure for Turkish Cypriots. The intention behind the amendments has long been called into question. The Akritas Plan, written in the height of the constitutional dispute by the Greek Cypriot interior minister Polykarpos Georgiadis, called for the removal of undesirable elements of the constitution so as to allow power sharing to work. The plan envisaged a swift retaliatory attack on Turkish Cypriot strongholds should Turkish Cypriots resort to violence to resist the measures, stating, in the event of a planned or staged Turkish attack, it is imperative to overcome it by force in the shortest possible time, because if we succeed in gaining command of the situation in one or two days, no outside, intervention would be either justified or possible. Whether Makarios's proposals were part of the Akritas plan is unclear, however it remains that sentiment towards Enosis had not completely disappeared with independence. Makarios described independence as, "...a step on the road to Enosis." Preparations for conflict were not entirely absent from Turkish Cypriots either, with right-wing elements still believing Taksim partition the best safeguard against Enosis. Greek Cypriots however believe the amendments were a necessity stemming from a perceived attempt by Turkish Cypriots to frustrate the working of government. Turkish Cypriots saw it as a means to reduce their status within the state from one of co-founder to that of minority, seeing it as a first step towards enosis. The security situation deteriorated rapidly. Topic: <laughs> Intercommunal violence. An armed conflict was triggered after December 21, 1963, a period remembered by Turkish Cypriots as Bloody Christmas, when a Greek Cypriot policeman that had been called to help deal with a taxi driver refusing officers already on the scene access to check the identification documents of his customers, took out his gun upon arrival and shot and killed the taxi driver and his partner. Eric Solston summarized the events as follows. A Greek Cypriot police patrol, ostensibly checking identification documents, stopped a Turkish Cypriot couple on the edge of the Turkish quarter. A hostile crowd gathered, shots were fired, and two Turkish Cypriots were killed. In the morning after the shooting, crowds gathered in protest in northern Nicosia, likely encouraged by the TMT, without incident. 
On the evening of the 22nd, gunfire broke out, communication lines to the Turkish neighborhoods were cut, and the Greek Cypriot police occupied the nearby airport. On the 23rd, a ceasefire was negotiated, but did not hold. Fighting, including automatic weapons fire, between Greek and Turkish Cypriots and militias increased in Nicosia and Larnaca. A force of Greek Cypriot irregulars led by Nikos Sampson entered the Nicosia suburb of Omorfata and engaged in heavy firing on armed, as well as by some accounts unarmed, Turkish Cypriots. The Omorfata clash has been described by Turkish Cypriots as a massacre, while this view has generally not been acknowledged by Greek Cypriots. Further ceasefires were arranged between the two sides, but also failed. By Christmas Eve, the 24th, Britain, Greece, and Turkey had joined talks, with all sides calling for a truce. On Christmas Day, Turkish fighter jets overflew Nicosia in a show of support. Finally it was agreed to allow a force of 2,700 British soldiers to help enforce a ceasefire. In the next days, a buffer zone was created in Nicosia, and a British officer marked a line on a map with green ink, separating the two sides of the city, which was the beginning of the Green Line. Fighting continued across the island for the next several weeks, in total 364 Turkish Cypriots and 174 Greek Cypriots were killed during the violence. 25,000 Turkish Cypriots from 103 to 109 villages fled and were displaced into enclaves and thousands of Turkish Cypriot houses were ransacked or completely destroyed. 700 Turkish Cypriot hostages, including men, women and children, were taken from the northern suburbs of Nicosia into Greek Cypriot houses at Omorfata North Suburb, which in turn became refugees in their own country. Greek historian Ronaldos Katsournis stated that he was an eyewitness to the retaliation murder and communal burial of 32 Turkish Cypriot civilians in 1963 in Famagusta. Contemporary newspapers also reported on the forceful exodus of the Turkish Cypriots from their homes. According to the Times in 1964, threats, shootings and attempts of arson were committed against the Turkish Cypriots to force them out of their homes. The Daily Express wrote that 25,000 Turks have already been forced to leave their homes." The Guardian reported a massacre of Turks at Limassol on 16 February 1964. Turkey had by now readied its fleet and its fighter jets appeared over Nicosia. Turkey was dissuaded from direct involvement by the creation of a United Nations peacekeeping force in Cyprus in 1964. Despite the negotiated ceasefire in Nicosia, attacks on the Turkish Cypriot persisted, particularly in Limassol. Concerned about the possibility of a Turkish invasion, Makarios undertook the creation of a Greek Cypriot conscript-based army called the National Guard. A general from Greece took charge of the army, whilst a further 20,000 well-equipped officers and men were smuggled from Greece into Cyprus. Turkey threatened to intervene once more, but was prevented by a strongly worded letter from the American President Lyndon B. Johnson, anxious to avoid a conflict between NATO allies Greece and Turkey at the height of the Cold War. Turkish Cypriots had by now established an important bridgehead at Kokina, provided with arms, volunteers and materials from Turkey and abroad. Seeing this incursion of foreign weapons and troops as a major threat, the Cypriot government invited George Grievers to return from Greece as commander of the Greek troops on the island and launch a major attack on the bridgehead. Turkey retaliated by dispatching its fighter jets to bomb Greek positions, causing Makarios to threaten an attack on every Turkish Cypriot village on the island if the bombings did not cease. The conflict had now drawn in Greece and Turkey, with both countries amassing troops on their Thracian borders. Efforts at mediation by Dean Acheson, a former U.S. Secretary of State, and UN-appointed mediator Gallo Plaza had failed, all the while the division of the two communities becoming more apparent. Greek Cypriot forces were estimated at some 30,000, including the National Guard and the large contingent from Greece. Defending the Turkish Cypriot enclaves was a force of approximately 5,000 irregulars, led by a Turkish colonel, but lacking the equipment and organization of the Greek forces. The Secretary General of the United Nations in 1964, Youth Ant, reported the damage during the conflicts. UNFICYP carried out a detailed survey of all damage to properties throughout the island during the disturbances. It shows that in 109 villages, most of them Turkish Cypriot or mixed villages, 527 houses have been destroyed while 2,000 others have suffered damage from looting. Topic. 
Crisis of 1967 The situation worsened in 1967, when a military junta overthrew the democratically elected government of Greece, and began applying pressure on Makarios to achieve enosis. Makarios, not wishing to become part of a military dictatorship or trigger a Turkish invasion, began to distance himself from the goal of enosis. This caused tensions with the junta in Greece as well as George Grievers in Cyprus. Grivas's control over the National Guard and Greek contingent was seen as a threat to Makarios's position, who now feared a possible coup. Grievas escalated the conflict when his armed units began patrolling the Turkish Cypriot enclaves of Eos Theodoros and Kofinu, and on November 15 engaged in heavy fighting with the Turkish Cypriots. By the time of his withdrawal 26 Turkish Cypriots had been killed. Turkey replied with an ultimatum demanding that Grievers be removed from the island, that the troops smuggled from Greece in excess of the limits of the Treaty of Alliance be removed, and that the economic blockades on the Turkish Cypriot enclaves be lifted. Grievers resigned his position and 12,000 Greek troops were withdrawn. Makarios now attempted to consolidate his position by reducing the number of National Guard troops, and by creating a paramilitary force loyal to Cypriot independence. In 1968, acknowledging that enosis was now all but impossible, Makarios stated, a solution by necessity must be sought within the limits of what is feasible which does not always coincide with the limits of what is desirable. <laughs> <laughs> Greek coup After 1967 tensions between the Greek and Turkish Cypriots subsided. Instead, the main source of tension on the island came from factions within the Greek Cypriot community. Although Makarios had effectively abandoned Enosis in favor of an attainable solution, many others continued to believe that the only legitimate political aspiration for Greek Cypriots was union with Greece. Makarios was branded a traitor to the cause by Grievers and, in 1971, he made a clandestine return to the island. On his arrival, Grievers began by establishing a nationalist paramilitary group known as the National Organization of Cypriot Fighters Ethnic I Organosis Kyprian Agoniston B or EOKAB, drawing comparisons with the EOKA struggle for Enosis under the British colonial administration of the 1950s. The military junta in Athens saw Makarios as an obstacle, and directed funds to Grievers to carry out a number of attacks and to fund a propaganda campaign through the creation of pro Enosis newspapers. Makarios's failure to disband the National Guard, whose officer class was dominated by mainland Greeks, had meant the junta had practical control over the Cypriot military establishment, leaving Makarios isolated and a vulnerable target. <laughs> Turkish invasion See also Modern history of Cyprus Turkish resistance organization